Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. So glad to have you guys here tonight. Um, yeah, so I hope everyone's having a wonderful week. Uh, I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about what I'm up to, and then we'll get into some readings and stuff. So I've organized a meditation plus healing um, for the 4 for 4 portal that's coming up. Um, I have a special Facebook group for it. If anybody is willing to or wants to join, um, what it will be is on the 4 for 4 portal, so April 4th at 4.15, you can come into the group and we're giving free healings. I've asked every one of my students um, if they want to come in and join so that we can maximize who receives healing. So I've got a big turnout so far and we're just opening it up to whoever wants to join. So I would love for anybody who wants free healings um, that day to come in. Um, so far we have about 20 facilitators ready to go to give healing to whomever needs it. So you set your intention that day and, you know, we'll bring forward our best um, of whatever source decides you need. And uh, yeah, so exciting. Um, I love being called to action. Uh, when, when source asks us to do something, um, for me, it's never a no. It's, it's yes and now and let's do it. Um, I just find it so rewarding and so fulfilling to step into that light. And maybe for some of you who are just stepping into this journey of awakening, and you're looking for that guidance, come join us that day. Come see what it's like to kind of jump in on that, experience what that quantum energy feels like or what it looks like to you, and, and come in and experience it. Um, we'd love to share it all with everybody. Um, and then you can get a feel for what that energy looks like for you. Um, but I hope everyone's having a great, great week. Um, maybe let's chat a little bit about, like, how the energies are settling a little bit on the planet. Uh, there's a lot of still ascension stuff going on. There's a lot of still heaviness that's, you know, in, in a lot of cities and towns. Um, people are looking for a way to get out and enjoy, you know, this springtime. So you can, you can go out and still have a walk. Go in nature and sit down and, you know, ground out the energy that you don't need anymore. You know, maybe do a, a journal page and take it with you and, and bury it. Um, make sure it's paper that will decompose. Um, you know, or else you can burn that in your, in your yard, right? Write down those things that you're willing to release and get rid of. And then write down three things you want to manifest, right? As we release, we want to bring something new back in for us. So if you, if you bring in um, the intention to let go of something that's no longer serving you, maybe it's, you know, a friendship or the energy of a past partner, or maybe it's an, a job that you need to let go of, or maybe it's the stranglehold on money. Um, so allowing these things to be released um, and then asking new things to come in. You know, we can ask for, for anything. Our guides will support us and guide us to how we're to get those things. You know, for me, being of service is like the biggest thing. Um, <laughs> um, so allowing, allowing them to bring those manifestations to you is wonderful. Usually we do three manifestations of the abundances we want to bring in. So, yeah, so you can, you can write those down and then keep those. Um, usually for Feng Shui, we keep those in like the top southwest corner. Um, so you can park them there with your abundance checks um, and allow those manifestations to come through. And I guess we have our first caller. Hello, Brittany. How are you? Or sorry, Brianna. Hi. Hi. Good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Uh, what can I do for you tonight? Um, well, Tonight, I'm actually, um, I'm, I'm going through a lot right now. Um, I am, have known for a little while that I'm, I also am gifted and um, definitely impacting. Um, basically, um, my kids, dad, and I, we get along. I don't want to say co-parent well, but we get along. And um, it's important for my kids' sake. And I've. I feel like I've been very taken advantage of by, and um, basically, there's um, a child support hearing coming up, and I need to I need to tell the truth about what's going on, and I didn't ask time to the judge, and I'm very intimidated because I feel like he's um, a narcissist. I'm an empath, so I I feel like I was. Um, you know, I, I feel like I've been very played with, and there's there is going to be an ornament of time before the hearing where we're going to be alone, or not necessarily alone, but we talk. You know, we we can 
co-parent and stuff, then he's, he's not going to see this coming. And I mean, basically, my question is, is how is this, how is this going to go? Is there anybody from my family from the other side that has a message for me about this that I've been trying to communicate through to them all the time? But it's, it's hard to do when it's, when it's a family, you know, to, to 100% pick up on what's, what's being said to me or shown to me or whatever like that. So that's basically what I'm looking for is insight. I, I need to, I need to get my head in the game and let the fears and anxiety, you know, separate itself. And I've got to get the strength to do this for my kids and not let the narcissist win, you know, so it's just, it's, it's a struggle. Yeah, so so you you have a it looks like a grandmother figure, and I see another male behind you. I don't feel like it's a grandfather. It feels like um, an uncle or a cousin. I feel like they're always been there to support you. Um, you not being able to bring them in or connect with them, like they they feel your presence all the time. They they don't leave you. It's just a matter of asking them to come in to give you support. What my guides are showing me is the pillar that runs down your back, that the one that holds you up with strength. It feels like it's a little bit crumbly and it feels like you've allowed so much stuff to come in and out. And as you're healing it, it's putting these pieces back together, but it's not fully erect. And I feel like this hearing that's coming up, you going to court is tough for you because you are building whatever you want in that bond back with him. So it's not so chaotic, but it's like, as you get to court, you have to tell the truth in order to put forth all the information. I do feel like he's going to try to omit certain things. So I feel like you almost need to stand in your power and understand what that means, right? Like take the empathic part of you and go shove her in the corner for a timeout and say, you know what, we'll, we'll chat after this is over. Because I feel like the strength that you want is, is trying to come out and you're suppressing a little bit because you don't want to get hurt, right? So okay. it's like that younger child coming forward and it's like, if we do this, I don't want to get hurt. I'm going to be sad if this happens. And if it doesn't, if the outcome is not in my favor, it's going to be devastating. So when I look inside of your energy, I see this young little girl sitting in your chest crying, not sure how to move yeah. forward and not sure how to step into her power. And it's more just let that little girl free and let her incorporate back into you so that you can see that you can do this. And that this might be the hardest thing you ever do in your journey. But as you step into it, you'll realize that it's the best thing that's ever happened because you learn so much about yourself. You learn to step into that power. You learn to tell the truth. You learn to step in when it's, it doesn't feel good. And then the outcome is grander. Whether you win or lose, it's grander because you learn those lessons along the way to step into that light. Right. Right, you're absolutely correct about a lot. I can see the little girl crying inside, just kind of feeling like that's very relatable, actually. Um, yeah. So, so if we pull her out and just let her let her be free and incorporate back to you in a different way, so she's free now, and I feel her stepping in behind you, um, especially like in on your right hip side. So there, she just went back in in a different way. So now she's not crying in the front of you. Now she's able to come back into you to support you. So that, that pillar that I was talking about is now those pieces are coming back together more and more so that when you step forward, it's like, shit, I got this, <laughs> right? So you're going to yeah. see with your own eyes that you can do this. And bringing in, bringing in those loved ones, even if you don't see them or sense them or talk to them, ask them to come. Like every day, say, I need you to give me that strength right now. Show me that strength so that I know that stepping forward, I'm in the right place. I'm stepping forward in the right direction. And you'll be able to start to feel right. their vibration. So you'll know that they're there, right? So a lot of people who are just starting this journey and want to tap into some of that mediumship stuff, it's really about bringing them in and just asking them to show you the vibration, right? Because every single thing has a vibration. They're no different. So when they come in, it's like vibrate wherever it is on your body. And then as they step back and forward again, you'll know that that's them. That same vibration will show up. So you're never alone. Right. They're standing behind you going, we're here. We're, we, we're going to kick butt and we're going to help you push that forward. Okay. Thank you. That's very, very helpful. 
Yeah. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't step forward and just look at it as though I need to stand in my light, my power, and I'm going to tell the truth to the best of my ability and nothing's going to stand in that way. So, so I'm going to teach them really quick. Before, before you go into the courtroom, I'm just going to teach you this really fast because it works really well. If you cup your hands together like this and you ask for an energy ball to go into there, you can put your intention into that energy ball. So that day before you head into the courtroom, fill it up with love and joy and strength and communication and ease and flow and calmness. And then just enter that right into your, your heart chakra. And you'll feel it start to expand in there. And when you step in there, it's going to be like, there's no doubt. Okay. Yeah, that's actually something I've been um, really struggling with actually today and communicating with my boyfriend about is like, because he's going to be working and just just knowing that I'm going to be there alone with him. So it's nice to know that like I'm not alone. And I've, it's, it's sometimes I've got to be reminded. I. I feel like this world has just been so crazy lately, and I feel myself picking up on a lot of it. I, I, <laughs> a lot of what you were saying right before we start, started speaking, um, is, is stuff I was all thinking about today, um, and it, it's affected me. I, I, I can't watch the news. I get, I feel like I almost pick up on the people feeling through the television, and it's, it's too much, and. That that's that's something I'm still trying to figure out. Um, um, full disclosure, I'm I'm three and a half years sober, so it's um, been a journey for me through that because I, I've been told before by psycho comedians that I have the same thing and underdeveloped, and I didn't I didn't really know until I did get sober and my eyes were open and I had a spiritual awakening and a lot started coming to me and it's just that but now I'm I notice I'm too passive because I'm taking accountability too much where and I'm allowing myself to get up all over and it's just trying to, to basically I need to get that backbone that I that I used to have back instead of the passive that I've got now or the picking up on the feelings I don't even know if I'm making any sense but I don't know if you have any advice for any cop like me, but besides what you've given me, but that which is helpful and knowing that. Yeah, so if you use the energy ball and allow your that empathic part to just stand aside, you'll you'll start to notice the disconnect, right? Because we don't have to pick up everybody's stuff. Right? So ground the energy out. I command myself to ground. This isn't mine. Send it back with love, right? Get it off of you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank I didn't so think much. about doing it like that, but thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. Thank you so much for coming in tonight and, and allowing me to read for you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for your help. I really appreciate it. Very welcome. Enjoy. Have a great, uh, have a great rest of your night. You too. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, Tanya. Hello. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm pretty good. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. What can I help you with tonight? Can you hear me? I can, absolutely, yep. Hello? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, so let's just, we'll chat a little bit about the grounding stuff that I just said to the girl there. So so when we, when we feel a little bit overwhelmed and stuff, we can just ask that we be grounded back to Mother Earth. So if something's you know, st the balance inside of you, you can just say, I commend myself to ground. Any energy that's not mine, please return to Mother Earth. She recycles it and then sends it back through the trees and anything else. Hi, Tanya. Hi, I can hear you now. Awesome, awesome. What can I help you with, hun? Um, yeah, I'll just, can you, would you be able to give me a, a some sort of future reading? Like, yes. 
where I might be heading. I feel like in the next three years, I'm concerned. <laughs> What's that? Say that again. As far as like work's concerned, um, can you see anything in the future? Absolutely. So the first thing that actually came up for you was that I see a move in three to five years, and I also see a job change in around that time frame as well. I feel like the job will come after the move. Um, I do feel like there's a promotion involved with it as well. More money, better benefits. And it seems like longer periods of time off, vacation time or family time, it feels more like it's called family time instead of vacation. Um, it feels like yeah. it feels like it's not just yet. I feel like you have the opportunity to expand and grow in where you are now. It's not as big of a growth mm -hmm. as it is coming up. Um, it's just not yet. I but I do that. see I do see a trip um, prior to that, like a vacation trip. Um, I feel like mm -hmm. I feel like it's you and a friend. It doesn't feel like it's family related. But I just feel like it's a it's like a, a weekend away for you. And I feel like there's a bigger trip after you move. So going into like, I want to say towards the beginning of year six, uh, you'll see that big shift with the money in that. You'll be able to travel more to wherever you want to go. And it feels like you travel for the amount of time you're off. So like Paris or um, I see Paris, I see Europe, and then I see almost towards Canada side, and that, that won't be it. That'll be a little bit further out, but it's kind of like, and after that, I feel like it's more rooted where you, where you are. Okay. So that's in about six years or so, you think? Like, e yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And, and as far as like work, so in six years, I'll be in what a different, um, a different sort of job. It does, it does feel like you're switching jobs altogether. It feels like it's more money, and I feel like that's what you're chasing at that point. It feels like the, it feels like you're going to outgrow what you're doing now. There's a little bit of boredom that I feel like has already started. It feels like, eh, that can like wait till later. So I feel like by the time this transition's ready to come, you're, like, totally ready to do it, right? You're, like, I feel okay. like you're getting bored. It doesn't feel like you're stimulated, but I feel like you're going to hold out for that. Like, you can upgrade where you are now. I just don't feel like it's the perfect job for you. You don't? Or you do? Look. No, I don't. Like, when you get to this other job, that's the perfect job. So where you are right now, it doesn't okay, feel like it's the perfect job. job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's coming. Yeah. yeah. It's coming. You need to be patient, yeah. they're saying. It yeah. feels like you want to chase after okay. certain things, and they're just like, just be patient. Be patient. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I feel yeah. like you've asked for this job, and because it's not coming fast enough for you, that it's kind of like, okay, I'm getting impatient now. Like, when's it coming? When's it due? Like, that's kind of stuff. You can, you can actually collapse mm -hmm. the timeline. So so it's like, here's now, and here's the, the timeline of the job. We can collapse it by taking a little bit more action or clearing out some of the stuff that's old stagnant energy, and it will propel it forward more. So you could take that five-year okay. timeline and collapse it down to two if you really wanted to. Right. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Everything has a shiftable timeline. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm still sort of like figuring out what it is too that um, I've got a lot of different things that I'd like to do, but I just don't know where to focus with my time at the moment. Um, I see, so I see a weekend retreat that's coming up for you before you go on your weekend away. I feel like within the next six months, it feels like a weekend retreat. And I feel like there's like a women's circle. And I feel like within that women's circle, you're going to start to make connections. And I feel like someone's going to reach out to you. It feels like you're going to start working with women. So entrepreneurs, women, being able to stand up, being able to speak. I feel like you're going to do um like a vocal um seminar it feels like you're going to be one of a speaker oh wow okay <laughs> so it might not be where you are now but i feel like it gives you it gives your get your feet wet right so never turn down an opportunity to step into something just to try it to see where it incorporates back to yeah. you but i feel like somebody there is going to reach out and show you something and it's going to be like mm, that's interesting 
because I feel like you can change careers into anything. Like even if I tap into your Akashic right now, it's I've got like 15 things sitting in front of me. So I see like healer, I see, you know, public speaker, I see, you know, a businesswoman, I see, you know, so it's, it's your choice what you choose, but so much stuff is coming at me. It's kind of like you can choose whatever you want to do. I can almost see you in 20 years, like quitting everything and doing a home practice. What was that? Like in 20 years, I can see you quitting everything and just doing your own home practice. My, my so own like, en like energy healing practice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. And anything on the um, relationship front? <laughs> Are you currently with somebody? No. No? No. I see a gentleman, I want to say July. I feel like you're going to meet him in July. He's tall, about six foot one. He has short brown hair, he, like around, the, around his ears and that, and a little bit longer on the top of his head. Um, it feels like he's a little bit skinny in the chest, so you might need to feed him a little bit more. Um, it feels like his stomach is a little bit, like he's tiny in the waist, but he's very tall. They're a little bit lengthy. Oh, wow. um, um, younger, older? I feel like he's younger than you. His name starts with a B. Um, he loves to be like casual on the weekends, but I feel like he does a little bit of like business stuff during the week. No suit though. Like he's like, no, I'm not doing a suit. So it's not so corporate that he needs to wear a suit, but he loves business. He loves that financial part of it. Um, he does not have children. He doesn't. He's well off. His family is well off. Um, he loves to dine out. So restaurants is his thing. Like I feel like he loves restaurants. Um, they're also showing me that you'll meet him and you won't be sure. So you'll, it's like, I almost feel like you need to date him for a little bit to kind of like build the confidence to understand what the relationship is supposed to be because he's very calm. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like, I don't feel like you know what that is in a relationship. So it feels, it feels yeah. good. It, <laughs> it feels okay. good. When <laughs> yeah. It just feels like you're unsure in the beginning, but give it a chance. They're saying like, don't dismiss it. Just just go with the flow for like a few dates and then start to go into, I can see myself doing this. And then start picking things that you want to do with him as well. Like, don't just allow him okay. to decide certain things. You do it too. Uh-huh. Okay. Awesome. We're going to, I have to let you go though. I'm so sorry. It was such a okay. pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Much love to you. Thank you too. Thank you. All right, take care. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for everyone who's watching and on the replays. I appreciate it and love you all. Much love and light. Take care, guys.